Hey Trailblazers, welcome back to the Declarative Academy. Today, we're jumping into an essential part of Salesforce security, controlling access to objects. We'll be exploring how to manage permissions at the object level to ensure each user has exactly the access they need and nothing more. In this session, we'll cover everything from using profiles to restrict access to creating permission sets for specific tasks. Ready to dive in and start customizing? Let's get going. Here's what we'll cover today, managing object permissions. First, we will start with exploring controlling access to data types. Next, using profiles to restrict access, that is setting up user profiles. And lastly, we look at creating and assigning permission sets. All right, let's get started with object permissions. First up, let's talk about object permissions. In Salesforce, an object is a type of data like accounts or leads and object permissions determine if users can create, view, edit, or delete records of that object. To access these permissions, go to Setup, type Profiles in the Quick Find box and select Profiles. Here, you'll see a list of all profiles in your org with each profile defining object permissions based on user needs. Think of profiles as job titles. They define the baseline permissions that allow a user to do their job. We will discuss profiles more soon, but let's continue discussing permissions. Think of it. A sales user needs different object permissions than a customer support user. Profiles ensure that these differences are clear and enforced. Now, let's explore using profiles to define access. Profiles are the primary tool for defining a user's object level access. Every user in Salesforce is assigned a profile that sets their baseline permissions. Profiles determine what data users can see and interact with. In Salesforce, there are two types of profiles, standard profiles and custom profiles. Let's break down what each means and why they're important. First, standard profiles. Standard profiles come pre-built in Salesforce and serve as templates for common rules, each with set permissions and access levels. Here are a few examples. Standard user general access to common features. Marketing user, access for marketing tasks and lead management. Contract manager, permissions related to managing contracts. System administrator, full access to manage and configure Salesforce. Standard profiles work well for common roles, but may not cover every specific need within your organization. And that leads us to custom profiles. If your organization's needs don't fit perfectly with these standard profiles, you can create custom profiles by cloning an existing one and adjusting the permissions. This flexibility allows you to tailor access according to specific roles or projects. Custom profiles are helpful for roles that need unique access, like a team that handles sensitive financial data but only requires view permissions for certain records. This combination of profiles and permission sets gives us great flexibility. Now, let's move on to the practical side, creating and managing profiles. Let's look at managing profiles, creating, assigning, and adjusting them to ensure users have the right access. Let's look at steps to create a profile. Pro tip, creating a profile begins by cloning an existing profile, which saves time and preserves consistent settings. In setup, go to profiles, choose a profile to clone, click clone, name the new profile and click save. Next thing would be to assign the profile. Once created, you can assign this profile to users as follows. Go to setup, select users and click edit next to the user's name. Select the new profile from the profile dropdown, then click Save. Assigning profiles like this makes it easy to control access based on rules, ensuring each user sees only the data they need for their job. So far, we have covered managing object permissions and using profiles to restrict access. Now, let's talk about permission sets, a flexible tool that lets you enhance a user's permissions beyond what their profile provides. Permission sets allow you to grant additional access without changing their profile. Now, you might ask, 
when is the best time to use permission sets? Permission sets are ideal for special permissions or temporary access. Let's say a sales rep is working on a joint project with marketing and needs access to a marketing app. Instead of creating a custom profile, you can add a permission set that provides access for the duration of the project. Let's now look at creating and assigning permission sets. In setup, go to permission sets, click new, enter a label and description, and assign a user license if needed. Save the set, then go to manage assignments and choose the users who need it. By layering permission sets on top of profiles, you can make precise adjustments without disrupting the base access defined by the profile. Before we move on, here are a few additional considerations for controlling object access effectively. Permission dependencies. Some permissions rely on others. For instance, if you grant edit access, you automatically give read access, view all and modify all. These permissions grant full access to an object. Use them sparingly as they override record level permissions. Permission set groups. If you're using multiple permission sets for a role, consider grouping them into a permission set group. This simplifies management and reduces duplication. Keeping these dependencies and best practices in mind will help you design a secure, scalable access model for your organization. Let's put what we've learned into action with a hands-on challenge. For this exercise, we'll create a custom profile for a cleaner role focused on data cleanup and verification. In setup, go to Profiles and clone the Minimum Access Salesforce profile. Name the new profile Cleaner. Set object permissions for accounts, contacts, and leads to read and edit only. Ensure that the edit and create object permissions are not enabled for any other objects within the Cleaner profile. Once done, head back to Trailhead to verify your steps and you'll see those points roll in. That wraps up our lesson on control access to objects in Salesforce. Let's quickly recap. We covered object permissions and how they can be managed with profiles and permission sets. You learned how to create and assign profiles. We also discussed using permission sets to grant additional access as needed. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the Declarative Academy for more Salesforce tutorials. Hit the bell icon to stay updated on our latest videos. Thanks for tuning in. Declare it, get it.